I think this is one of the landscapes that takes every ounce out of you. And I mean that in the sense of like, it takes every ounce of energy to be in it and to get across it. It takes every ounce of emotion to experience it, both in the good and the bad. And it takes ounces in the sense of like, you'll have weight on your back to make it through here. It's, you know, a valley floor and the mountains aren't just rolling slopes. They go from flat to straight up. There's no in-between. I think this hunt came together in a way that was uh, maybe unique. <laughs> I was invited on this hunt by a new friend that I had made um, that connected with me over a hunting story. And uh, she invited me to be on this doll sheep and mountain caribou hunt and then found out she couldn't go and handed me the gift to ask someone else and immediately felt like I had been re-gifted an opportunity to do something like what she did for me and Bridget was it like that's exactly who I wanted to go with and this story just kind of grew as the year went on and now we're here. <laughs> Doll's sheep is the end-all, be-all species and hunt and adventure and experience. And any hunter that you ask about sheep hunting is going to explain that this is a once-in-a-lifetime really special moment. And, and most of them don't even talk about the, the actual hunt so much as the experience of being in camp and the people you're going to meet and the country you're going to be in. Having someone that is 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 hard a hunter, the experience level it doesn't have to be an experience hunting, but it has to be in the experience and it's suffering. It sounds really weird to say, but you've got to be able to have the wherewithal to last through a hunt like this. It's such a luxury to have somebody else here experiencing it for the first time, so you're not the weirdo who's like, there's a wolf print right there. <laughs> Can you guys see this? There's a wolf print right there. You know, like, she's experiencing all these new things. It, it's definitely a luxury to have that sort of partner to go through this with. Oh my God. <laughs> Hunting with a guide is totally new to me. Never hunted with an outfitter before. So the first couple days was a little bit of a, a learning curve. You definitely need to trust your guide. Basically what we're going to do is, is hike up this draw behind camp and try and glass some of these front faces. Then there's four sheep right, there's four sheep right there actually. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm not kidding right there. So that was easier than I thought it was going to be. We haven't left camp yet. <laughs> that first day, like immediately jumping into it and immediately having action was pretty cool, pretty special. So that that first day, I actually felt pretty bad. It, it was a terrible hike up there. It was rocky and steep and pretty sketchy in some spots. Thanks for the hand. No problem. Teamwork makes dream work, and we'll shoot a sheep. Because I mean, like, you slip, boop, you're in the creek. There was no way to like properly picture what it was actually going to be like. There's definitely a couple of moments where you just have to kind of stay focused on your footwork. All right, I have a lot of respect for sheep. <laughs> Always rock to grab her, just letting go. Ooh, that was a climb. But we only lost one trekking pole. That's good. This hillside does not feel stable. <laughs> where these sheep like to be, you can bet that it's gonna, it'll, it'll be steep and rocky. So what are you thinking? So in the Northwest Territories, legal size for sheep, there is no legal age limit. Uh, legal size for sheep is three quarter curl, so it's pretty small. Over here, there's this little sheep right on the ledge, like literally staring at us. Now, because of the way the outfitters are run here and there's hardly any resident pressure, and the outfitters manage their tags, like they're in complete control. Harold Grindy, the outfitter, has a rule 
that he sets for his own guides, and that is to look for rams that are 10 years or older. He's looking to take out the oldest rams that are likely at the end of their life cycle because that's the best way to sustain this resource for future hunters. Harold's not just an elfer. He's, he's a management. He's a, he's, he's a biologist. Harold Rule is 10. That's it. Like, you just want old sheep. There's three. When you see him in a spotting scope and you, you're looking for weight here, you're looking for where they're that fourth year ring is dropping below their eye. When you see rams like that, you gotta get on them and, and age them. And then if it's not, you back off and we'll find the next one. Boy, when you see one with mass, you really know it. If you look at him, his head just looks like he's doing Yeah. They kind of look like they have Princess Leia buttons on the side of their head from far away. If we were lucky, we'd spot a ram in the morning and then spend three to five hours like just trekking over crazy, unstable rocks and through streams trying to stay dry. Hours later, you know, you're, you're tired and you're not even sure if there was a reason to do it because you get up there and almost immediately you can properly age a ram. he'd identify really quickly that it was a ram under 10 years old. Like, now what? You have to move on and, and create another opportunity and find more sheep. Jesse came into the trip with a goal of putting a stock on a caribou bull. From the start, it was always gonna be a bow hunt. When you're out and you're hunting and you have someone that has a doll sheep tag and you have a caribou tag, it's kind of an unspoken rule that the sheep needs to come down first. I was very aware of the fact that like we still didn't have a sheep down, but when we walked around a corner, there was a nice caribou uh, with some velvet rubbed off, so we had a blood red horn on one side, and I want to try and put a stock on him. I know a lot of hunters say they're going to bow hunt and then they get there and realize they can bring home a caribou if they switch over to a rifle, and that was never a thought that crossed her mind. And you just kind of saw little by little, like the top of her head getting closer and closer. And I think at that point, my excitement level was probably more than hers. Last guy, when he stood up, was right around 40 yards. And just a touch out of where I feel comfortable shooting downhill with a light wind. <laughs> but it's freaking cool. Still bow range to a caribou. I got four ram. That one looks. Decent. The minute Dane spotted those sheep, my head started doing calculations. And I, I have fallen victim to this so many times because you see them and you're like, those are at least three and a half hours away hiking. I think we need to go back and come across the face of that hill. Dane was committed that this hunt was happening, whether we get up there and don't see sheep or we get up there and we do see sheep, it was happening. It's 3.30. We've hunted really hard for five days. My body is hurting. There's some times where you're in this like dark place in your head and you just have to be like, we're going up there and if we don't do it, that isn't hunting. And there's like a slim chance where everything could get better if there's a sheep up there. But if there's not a sheep up there, I'm gonna be heartbroken. And this is all happening as we're walking up the drainage and I look up and see the sheep and everything changed. What's the distance? Under 325. There's a third one. No, no, this is, this is the group. We're going to go up to the this guy. Okay. What's my distance? What's my distance? There's still two. He's a heavy brood on, on this. 
on the horn that you'll see these heavy boom. You just took a step forward, right, that time? No, there's two written in front of me. Okay. Look, they're all lined up. He's going behind rocks. I don't have a shot right now. Okay, I got him. Over him. I don't have him. Is he looking right? Yeah, he's he's right in front still. Shoot again. Yeah, you brought him. He's going down. He looks like he's hurting. Yeah, I fucking nailed him that time. Yeah, you fucking him. That is a stud. Jesse's crying. <laughs> I'm shaking. I can't decide if I'm gonna laugh or cry. Perfect. That's awesome. <laughs> My first impression of that ram, like he's 12 years old. You know, when you walk up to a ram, he's he's broomed to his third year on this side, and he was second on this side. He had a good hard life. What his book looked like and how it played into the story of this place was, um, you felt it when you walk up to him. And then I think the eyes kind of glass over and it sets in of like, <laughs> now he becomes food. The best thing we can do is to respect him by, by eating him and using him and being very, very thankful for this opportunity. You have food, you have this wild place, you have these amazing people that you get to spend it with. And that's when the joy tends to come. To go into this hunt and have a sheep tag in my pocket because of Jesse is pretty difficult to describe. Like that kind of selflessness is what draws people to Jesse and why it's, it's so cool to me that she's part of my life and it was always the plan that she was going to be part of every step of the sheep hunt and vice versa, that I would be every part of the caribou hunt. That's a total success, and it just completely planted that seed of like, we need to go back. <laughs>